is not Sam Wrestling. Introducing your host from New York, here is Sam Roberts. I'm very excited for this conversation here on Not Sam Wrestling. It's something that I've been wanting to do for for quite a while, actually. Pre-pandemic life, I wanted to do this. I'm not one of these guys just jumping on the Hollywood bandwagon. However, the Hollywood bandwagon is jumping on board for our guest this week. Ladies and gentlemen, the always tense, Dan Housen. What's going on, man? Hello, yes, it's Dan Housen. Yes, like you said, Dan Housen's been waiting a long time to do this. We had plans to meet up in person mm-hmm. uh, to do this prior to the pandemic. So Dan Housen knows that you are truthful. Yes. Are, are you having on the famous bandwagon? Are you aware of that? Like over the last year, especially in the last like month, as your as your fame has skyrocketed, do you become sort of aware of people? Oh, now all of a sudden you're paying attention to Dan Housen. Now all of a sudden you want a little piece of Dan Housen. Yes, Dan Housen notices everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dan Housen can see them. He's which you know, whatever. Dan Housen will take it. It is fine. But uh, yes, Dan Housen has become quite famous. Thank you for noticing. I did notice. You know, I thought, I thought that when uh, you ended up on the Conan O'Brien podcast, I was like, well, this, this is a moment. And then for mere days later, The Rock to be tweeting not only about you, but your PT Cruiser. It had to be, I mean, it has to be a remarkable time of life for you right now. Yes, yes. Plus, you forgot. Yeah. Yeah, if I mentioned Pepsi Man gave Dan Housen to go to sleep as his finisher. Not only that, but then he celebrated oh, I... with you when The Rock tweeted. Yeah. I saw that. I saw what the Pepsi Man you said. Did. Yes, of course. I keep yeah. up with you. I keep up with the Pepsi Man. I keep up with The Rock. Yes, exactly. Dan Housen has had quite a week. And you know what? We uh, we, we don't. Dan, when does this show come out? It'll Dan, be out. When? It'll be out this. I mean, it'll be out uh, two days after recording the interview. Well, fantastic! Because Dan Housen has some great news, which will be out by this time. But Dan Housen is in a comic book cover as well. Oh my gosh! It'll be uh, Commanders in Crisis number ten by Steve Orlando for Image Comics. Dan Housen is a variant cover of some sort. Go order it at your local shop. Variant cover D. Wow. So Dan Housen will cap off the week by uh, being famous in comic book shops, as well as being great friends with The Rock, Conan O'Brien, CM Punk housing, you know, no big deal. No big deal. No big, and by the way, being a Ring of Honor superstar. Let's start there. How did yes. how did this start? I mean, you had built up quite a reputation for yourself on the independents. All the wrestling fans I knew were aware of and talking about this Dan Housen. They all loved that Dan, Dan Housen. And Ring of Honor, is the lucky girl that gets to take you to the prom. How did the negotiations with Ring of Honor go? Well, Dan Housen slid them a list and said, here's the demands. Yes. Actually, you know what? Uh, Dan Housen had been training with Alex Shelley Housen, and Alex Shelley really helped Dan Housen get a job there. Hmm. Very nice, very evil of him. Wow. Quite wonderful to Dan Housen. We'd been on a couple road trips to uh, AIW in Cleveland, and he took a liking to Dan Housen. And then helped Dan Housen get a job, which, of course, Dan Housen then wrote down a list of demands, as we've said. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, Dan Housen is not getting, getting, that's not even a word, but he's not gotten <laughs> so angry. He flubbed his words up. Uh, he's blimp yet. He's demanded a blimp from Dave Honor, owner of uh, Ring of Honor, and he's got nothing. Wow. Wow. Well, you always got to put in the contract, like, there has to be a time frame on this stuff. Because people will promise you the world and then simply never deliver on the blimp. Well, here's the thing. Yeah. You do not give Dan Housen the world. Dan Housen will take it. Right. Which he's doing. Right. So you will. Yeah. You. I mean, The Rock clearly has to have some kind of connections to blimp manufacturers or at least people that have blimps. So if Ring of Honor doesn't supply the blimp promised, I have to imagine the blimp is coming one way or another. Well, we'll have The Rock's lawyers over there. Oh. You know, Dan Housen maybe will bar- borrow some. I don't know. Yeah. How did that work? Who knows? Not Dan Housen. Well. But. Maybe we get Conan's people over there, knock on the door, say, hey, where the hell is his blimp? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Was there any, uh, when it, was it scary at all to sign with Ring of Honor? You know, I mean, I think when you're an independent uh, superstar, of course the goal is to get some guaranteed money, to get some stability yes. in wrestling. But at the same time, the freedom that comes with not having a contract, especially when you're Dan Housen, you're one of the more creative superstars uh, uh, out there. 
I, I would have to imagine that there is uh, at least a little bit of, I hope I get to maintain this level of creative freedom. Yes. Well, yeah, that, that's a good question, Sam Housen. Thank Great you. reporting. Thank you. So, <laughs> yes, Dan Housen was uh, a little worried that they were going to say, like, Davana would come up to Dan Housen and say, there will be no teeth, there will be no dancing, there will be no nothing, mm -hmm. which is the way Dan Housen hypnotizes the audience, by the way. Mm -hmm. And so far, there's been none. Wow. Just let Dan Housen be Dan Housen fully. They said, we have hired you. Obviously, it was uh, Dave Honor's assistant or something came up to Dan Housen because Dan Housen still has not seen this fellow. Wow. But they said, we hired you to be Dan Housen. Go be Dan Housen. And I guess you you test that, right? You test, you you, you got to go step by step. You got, all right, am I going to be able to get away with pouring teeth in Rhett Titus's mouth? And when you can get away with that, it's yes. like, okay, well, guess what? You just opened the door. You just allowed it. Now that's yes. never going to stop. Now Dan Housen can just do it. Now Dan Housen's rummaging around the offices, finding old pictures of uh, uh, Brian Danielson uh, housing and uh, CM Punk housing, and he's rummaging through them and he's trying to take them, but they won't let Dan Housen take them. Oh, you're trying to actually go, you're like you're going into the it's warehouse good. and finding old like stuff. Yes. Yeah, he's, Dan Housen has set up his own office in their warehouse. I see, I see. So, I, yeah, I guess that's I... a wonderful picture of his champion. Oh, that is very nice. It's, no? it's right on his desk. Oh, wow. It's very evil. Wow. Well, you're, I didn't, you know, you're, you're clearly a collectibles guy. For those of you watching this, not listening, you could see all the, all the wonderful superhero action figures uh, perched behind Dan Housen. And, and, you know, I know that you like to keep trinkets. Obviously, you have a jar of human teeth. That would be a collection. Yes. Celebrity teeth. Uh, David Arquette's teeth are part of that collection. Um, oh, Dan Housen likes you. You do your research. Well, I mean, I've been, as I've said, I've been following you, Pepsi Man and The Rock, for quite some time. So well, yes. do you... Legends of the Biz. Do you, is it something you've always been? Have you always been kind of a, a bit of a pack rat, a bit of a collector of the things that you love? Oh, yes. Also, these grow in value, you know. Oh. Not only do they look nice, but they grow in value. I see. And I think a collector of valuable wares. I see. Well, yeah, I mean, here's the thing that people forget sometimes because the entertainment value is so high and there there's so much pageantry about Danhausen and then the the brutality of Danhausen in the ring, they forget that third part, which is Danhausen the businessman. Oh, yes, which is maybe the most important part because it goes hand in hand with everything else. Right. Dan Housen must be a businessman so he can properly get on television or the radio waves as we're doing now and the internet waves. Right. And so he can take over the world. If you're bad at business, you are not on television. You are not taking over the world and hypnotizing the humans around. So that makes sense. That's what Dan Housen does. That makes sense. Yes. Now, do you, are, you a, are you a goal oriented business? A person like do you sit there and go like okay this is where i want to be next year this is where i want to be the year after or are you more you know what we're doing great let's keep it rolling a ah, little bit of both I so see. i believe it was last year dan hasn't put out a list because that Corey fellow put out a list of wrestlers so dan hasn't put out a list of uh goals right because all the other wrestlers were doing a list of wrestlers and dan hasn't did not what are we doing there we're all doing the same thing no dan hasn't <laughs> does it different right so he put out a list, and I believe Conan was on it. Right. Uh, Hot Topic may have been on it. Boom. What else was on it? Possibly uh, Super 7. Dan Housen wants an action figure, so they were on it. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, Adult Swim is on it, because Dan Housen would he feels he needs a TV show. Yeah. No, I... I Non-wrestling. Non do other things, too. Yeah. So diversify. Dan Housen, you know... Exactly. Because mm -hmm. then we bring more eyes on the product to see these wonderful wrestlers. Right. 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 How did, how did it means we all make more money? Exactly. And I love the fact that, you know, it was a big deal. They were talking about it on the A&E Stone Cold Steve Austin documentary, how there was like a Austin 316 shirts and Spencer gifts and, and in the malls and everything. Yes. And now, yeah. And Austin is going and they showed, by the way, Stone Cold Steve Austin on the Conan O'Brien show. And now we're in 2021. See? And look, I go to the mall. I walk into a hot topic. Very nice, very evil. Dan, Dan Housen t-shirt is on sale. And then I look at the Conan O'Brien podcast, and here is Dan Housen. How did that come about? How did you end up on the Conan O'Brien podcast show? Oh, yes. So that happened because uh, a bunch of fan housings who know that Dan Housen is uh, great friends with Conan Housen, 
tweeted at Dan Housen that there was a link to join some contest of some sort. Dan Housen really doesn't remember, to be quite honest. Mm-hmm. But Dan Housen won, apparently. So Dan Housen was contacted by the producers, who then had a phone call with Dan Housen, said, maybe, maybe we should CGI you to look a little more human, <laughs> to not frighten folks. Right. And uh, even though it's a podcast, they put up clips of YouTube stuff just like this. Mm-hmm. So they uh, CGI Dan Housing, did some voice changing technologies to help him blend in a little bit better. And uh, yes, we had a phone call with Conan. They kind of said, uh, hey, guess what? Tomorrow you're talking to Conan. And Dan, Dan Housing was like, what the hell are you talking about talking to Conan? <laughs> and then the next day, Dan Housing talked to uh, Gorley and Sona and uh, Conan. <laughs> it's amazing. It's one of those so things. It was a bit of a surprise. Yeah, I mean, for me, too, it's one of those things where I saw it and I was kind of looking, going like, oh, is this like the latest Photoshop joke that Dan Housen nope. is putting out? And then I'm like watching it going like, OK, where is the punchline? And then I'm going, is this like one of those fake like deep fake videos? Is this and I realized like, no, this is just Dan Housen talking to Conan O'Brien. This is amazing. The Internet Conan is O'Brien. one. Yes. It's fantastic. Uh, Dan Housen saw it, what, the night before Chuck Taylor posted about it. Uh-huh. And then Dan Housen was like, oh, my. And then Dan Housen couldn't sleep because Dan Housen was so excited to share it with everybody in the world uh-huh. the next day. And then we did. And then it's, from there, it's just been, uh, wow, lots of stuff happening. It, the Conan stuff, we got the rock stuff, we got the uh, CM Punk stuff. Yeah, yeah. Comic I mean, book. It seems like there's a there's a genuine happiness from the wrestling community at large for your success. Like that's I, I get the fact that, you know, The Rock is having some fun. CM Punk is is right yes. there in it. And then but I mean you go further and you look at the people you've you've collaborated on stuff with Generico. You've collaborated on stuff with Orange oh, yes. Cassidy. Like it feels like there is a there's a very raw raw mentality for Danhausen. I don't pick up on a lot of the weird sort of jealousy vibe. I feel like people are generally uh, happy for your success. Well, yes, Dan Housen was very excited about the Generico thing. He looks up to uh, Generico and he's uh, probably, I think, their best friends or something, Sammy Zanehausen. Mm-hmm. Dan Housen follows this. Uh, he was reading the Young Bucks book, real tangent, real quick. Yes. And uh, there was a section about merchandising where Sammy Zane or El Generico, one of the two, Dan Housen can't quite remember, would stand out, sell so much merch, make so much money, and come back with piles of 20s. Right. And then he would go uh, tell them, you know, hey, we're going to fight. And uh, <laughs> yes, that's kind of how Dan Housen does it. So he's following in the footsteps, if you will. So is that really uh, like that's yes. that's the strategy to go and be like, look, at I sold all this merch. Why would you not let me fight in the ring now? Exactly. Wow. The fans want it, obviously. Yeah. So there's a demand now. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So what is the, oh, the jealousy? Yes. Yeah. It doesn't appear so. Which is a good thing. Uh, even uh, today, Chris Judas tweeted at Dan Housen and said there's an open invite for the podcast. So maybe we shall do that as well. Christopher Judas, that could be huge. Yes. That's, yes, yes, yes. That's so fantastic. We shall see. Yeah. I love it. I love it. When did you feel like, uh, like, like you had found, at, at what point in your career did you feel like you had found kind of yourself? Did you feel like you, you're like, okay, I know. Because you've obviously always known who Dan Housen is. You've always been him. But when you realized, uh, I know how to present Dan Housen to the people, so the people will now understand who Dan Housen is. Yes. Uh, it was about two years ago. Wow. Dan Housen was uh, very evil, only evil, if you will. Mm-hmm. So Dan Housen was kind of experimenting with little dashes of nice added in, little bit of uh, personality, if you will, of Dan Housen's non-wrestling uh, persona and it seemed to work so dan housing discovered that if you are uh, very nice very evil rather than just very evil and scaring the hell out of people constantly mm-hmm. people want to support you more and throw their monies at you and uh come say hello so that's how dan housing did it, it was about two years ago we, we've done this and, and i would imagine too it's a lot easier to hypnotize people if their guard is down Exactly. You get it. Mm-hmm. Ooh, don't tell anyone in Dan Housen said this. I won't. I won't. I won't. But it does it's make sense to it's me. It's a trick. Yes, we'll whisper it so they cannot hear. I've also, I mean, I've noticed about you, you seem very tense 
kind of all the time. It seems like you're you're constantly and and I can I can see it in your mouth. You're gritting your teeth and then you're making a smile and then you're not quite you're you're kind of finding a facial expression to match something that you're trying to I mean do do you walk around in a constant state of tension? No, Dead Housing feels great. What are you talking about? It's a daily massage. He's so famous. He just walks in he says, Dan Housing's here. Do it. Uh, oh, okay. All right. That must be of nice. That must be nice. I guess it's, it's I guess the star treatment. Yes. I guess it's just the 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 way that, that that your body responds to the signals that your brain is sending to it. Yes, it's still, uh, well, you know, some would call Dan Housing the most electrocuted man in sports entertainment, but <laughs> I would say that that's that's probably fair. I I think that that's right. Um, you know, you you've been talking lately about uh PT Cruisers a lot, and uh, and you know that that was kind of a big part of the Ring of Honor signing was that they had promised also uh, a PT Cruiser for for you to use. When did you realize that PT Cruisers were kind of the symbol of success? In the automotive world. Well, you know, as Dan Housen sees it, uh, most celebrities get one. <laughs> yeah, so they're very exclusive. Yeah. The Rock has one. Yeah. Dan Housen is sending him another, uh, you know, on the house. Wow. Leave on his credit card he has access to. So, actually, you know what? You'll get one sent on the house as well for doing this interview for Dan Housen. That'd be great. Uh, you know, Pepsi Man's going to get one. Uh, Chris Judas will get one. Conan got three. You oh, know, what? he had to split it amongst his, his uh, Sona and... Matt Gorley. But uh, yes, they also have not given Dan Housen one yet, but hopefully they're sending these out because otherwise Dan Housen is making a lot of false promises. It is always amazing to me. You know, it's one thing to kind of grow up obsessed with wrestling and then become a wrestler and get to kind of celebrate that through your work. But when you can yes. celebrate everything that you're obsessed with, through wrestling, that's kind of when I uh, start to, my eyebrows start to raise. That's when I go like, oh, what's this going on over here when I'm catching little references to The Simpsons, maybe, inside of of, yes. of, of pro wrestling. And, and references that maybe, like, you know, even if you hadn't watched pro wrestling ever, you're like, oh, I know. I know where that comes from. Is that something that, that you try to do, or is that something that you just do naturally? So it is something that Dan Housen does naturally because these are things Dan Housen enjoys. So they just naturally come out as sure. Dan Housen is doing Dan Housen things, doing about his Dan Housen business. Uh, but yes, yeah, sometimes Dan Housen tries to push the envelope with this and see what he can get away with. Right. Like uh, Dan Housen came out, uh, he said this before, but he came out with a little plane at Limitless Wrestling. Instead, uh, it's the Spruce Moose <laughs> hop in to his opponent. <laughs> and the crowd all in unison chanted hop in at this fellow until he got very angry and smacked the airplane out of Dan Housen's hand into the audience, which one of them saved, by the way, and gave it back later. Oh, very Quite nice. Quite nice. Yeah. Uh, but yes, Dan Housen just tries to do this. That's where the tequila dance came from. Right, right, of course. Now, do you ever try a reference like that and it falls flat? Uh, sometimes, but sometimes Dan Housen will see that someone got it. So that's okay. That's a win in Dan Housen's book. If Dan Housen says something from The Simpsons that only one or two fans get, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's who it was for, ultimately. Yeah, exactly. And they'll appreciate it. I get it. I get it. You know, I, I when you when I think you sent me something about the Froyo being uh, evil. That's bad. Cursed. Right. That's bad. Yes. I was like, I know. I understand the reference. I got it. I I, I picked up on it right away. Yeah, so you just have to let it. No, this is not just for you. This is for the wide audience. Right, right. Now, who are your be careful. who are your motivations uh, as far as wrestling goes growing up? Because you could have gone a lot of ways, right? I mean, if if you love The Simpsons, you love Conan O'Brien, you could have gone into the comedy world. Obviously, you love superheroes. You could have gone into uh, writing comic books or writing film. You know, pro wrestling is where Dan Housen landed. So, who do you think uh, it was that you kind of uh, 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 locked on to at a young age? Well, the first one Dan Housen really locked onto was Kane because the visuals of him tearing down the cell, destroying The Undertaker. By the way, you had these two on your podcast recently, yes? Yeah, it blew my mind. It blew my mind. Yes, exactly. Now it's blowing your mind that you have Dan Housen, fellow legend of the biz, yeah. on your podcast. So True. Dan Housen understands. <laughs> so, uh, yes, anyways, he ripped this door off. Did you see it? Yeah. He threw it and he destroyed The Undertaker. Yeah, yeah. And that was when... And then there was... Uh, no, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, 
Okay, you go ahead. Guys. Well, I want you to talk. Wow, that was so. It's it's really like the storytelling, the 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 storytelling and the characters that locked you in, and the costumes. You see his costume. Mm-hmm. He's wearing this red. He looked like a monster. It was quite wonderful. Very mm-hmm. evil. So there was him. Uh, Mankind was quite uh, influential on Dan Housen. Mm-hmm. Still is. Uh, Gold Dust is wonderful. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else? Who else? Uh, as we go on, we have, of course, Stone Cold, and we have uh, Dan Housen's great best friend, Rock the Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> Most electrocuted man, yes. Yeah. We have him. He definitely influenced Dan Housen. Yeah. And then we go on to uh, the later years where Dan Housen, he stopped res- watching wrestling, had to do evil deeds for a little while. I get that. But, uh, he got brought back by uh, CM Punk on commentary. On commentary? Yes. He saw snippets here and there of the CM Punk fellow doing the Straight Edge Society, which was wonderful. Yes. But then Dan Housen really got back into it when he was injured, which was right after, I believe. And he was doing commentary because the whole show was entertaining to Dan Housen because this fellow, he talks quite good. Wow. That's very, very interesting. So that's you can you can thank uh, CM Punk for getting Dan Housing back into wrestling, thus becoming a wrestler. Yeah, and you know, I mean, I don't know if he would agree with you, but the straight edge society version of CM Punk, I feel like very evil. Almost completely evil. Oh yes. He's like a cult leader. It was wonderful. Yes. And then he shows up on commentary and you're like, Oh, he's kind of nice too. Oh, yes, but he's also very sarcastic. It made Dan Housen laugh because he's saying evil comments about these fellows. He also yelled at John Cena one time for knocking over his Diet Pepsi. <laughs> and then he attacked him later, and then he got back in the ring. It was wonderful. Yeah, it was great. I loved it. I get it. I get it. It all makes sense now. Um, yes. So when did you when did you realize that this is what you wanted to do with your life? Uh, well, Dan Housen did not know exactly how to go about this. Yeah. So Dan Housen has never known exactly what he wanted to be, but then he discovered that there was a school uh, only a few miles, mere miles away from his home, hmm. uh, the House of Truth by Truth Martini. Of course. Yeah, uh, Jimmy Jacobs. Sure. So Dan Housen went there, had a uh, very nice, sometimes very evil time getting slammed on the ring uh, to learn how to do this wrestling thing. Mm-hmm. And then from there, it was just, you know, whatever may have you, Dan Housen on the, on the prowl. Yeah. Now, I, you're also... So he's about uh, 20, 20, 20. You're also very, very strong. And that's something... Oh, yes. Very Thank st- you for noticing. Very strong. Quads, very strong. You know, Ooh, yes. clearly uh, uh, we're lifting a lot. Is this something that you always took seriously, becoming very strong, decreasing the body fat and, and having big old Danhausen muscles? Or is that something that came with wrestling? Yes. Uh, no, Dan Housen was doing it prior because, uh, he liked Batman. Have you ever heard of him? I've heard of Batman. Yeah, sure. Yes, yes. He, uh, you know, he, uh, does a lot of, uh, weightlifting in the comic books. So Dan Housen was like, that's pretty cool. Let's do it. <laughs> you know, so probably around when Dan Housen was, uh, when he really started reading comic books, 16, 17, he started buying them. Huh. That's it. So you didn't really so, read comic books as a run in. you didn't read comic books so much as a kid. It wasn't until your teens that you started reading comics. Oh well, uh, no no no! Dan Housen did the same thing with comics as he did with wrestling. He read them a lot as a child. Oh. Kind of dropped off for a little bit, but then was brought back around I don't know, fourteen, fifteen. So I see. I love that. Isn't it one? Is it yeah. one of those things where like you know you're doing something you love as a kid. Then you spend this period of time where you think you have to be cool. So you stop doing the things that you like. Yes. And then you realize, I'm not nearly as happy trying to be cool as I was when I was just doing the things that I like. Let me double down on the stuff that I like. Yes. And now who's cooler than Dan Housing? Look at all this stuff. Like, I mean, not that many people are getting tweets from the most electrocuted man in sports entertainment. So I would say nobody is cooler than Dan Housing. Is that probably right? That is correct. Yes, Dan Housen just doubled down. He collects. He goes back and he collects all the old comics he had as a child that he ruined because he probably just crunched them up and threw them to the side. Sure. Uh, he's going back and buying his old, uh, his old toys that are now updated, such as these mm-hmm. and the Ninja Turtles. Those are quite wonderful. Uh, horror figures from uh, NECA toys. Dan Housen collects those as well. I do too. The Ninja Turtles are a little frustrating though. They're very difficult to find. Yes, they are. But Dan Housing puts out a tweet and says, Hello, Fan Housing. Please help Dan Housing so he does not have to go to Targets. Smart. A little of that hypnosis on Twitter. 
Exactly. You I get, get it. This is hypnosis. Stan Hansen is using his evil power. Yeah, that's 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 pretty brilliant, actually. If you need to get something done, if you have the powers and you're not using them, what's the point of having them? But make no mistake, Dan Housen does not take advantage of his fan housing. He pays them, and he pays them handsomely. Huh? Well, you can. I mean, when you're rich and famous, yeah. that's really nothing, right? It's not a big deal. Exactly. Especially. No be- big deal. Yeah. Cool hundred bucks coming your way. Ooh, no big deal. Especially, you know, you're paying for action figures. They're only going to get more valuable. So it's like the money that you pay the fan housings, you're going to have coming back to you anyway. Precisely. Yeah. Do you have, uh, I mean... When all this good stuff is happening to you, you're getting recognized by the, by the, I mean, people literally from the Mount Rushmore of this thing. Do you, yes. th- do you start to worry about getting complacent where, uh oh, these goals are getting no. met very, very quickly? This motivates Dan Housing. Someone the other day asked, they said, well, now that you've been on the Conan show and Dan Housing quickly corrected them. No, he has not. Ah. Dan Housen must be on the television show, ah. on TV, or the full podcast at the very least. But the real goal, get on television. Do the television Conan O'Brien show. Do something like that. Uh, no, now that The Rock has treated you. No, 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 no. That's not the end of it. Dan Housen must work out with The Rock. Film a video with them. Have a nice time. Yeah, maybe even we keep s- going. start an NBC series called Young Dan Housen. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to have a crossover episode mm-hmm. with Young Rock. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's interesting. I want to go back to you talking about how, you know, Batman got you into working out because it's interesting that at that point in your life, you looked up to Batman because I feel like there's a lot of, uh, there's a, a, a criminal in Gotham that went by the name of Jack Napier that I feel like a lot of, yes. uh, a lot of motivation maybe from from Jack Napier might come towards the Danhausen. I feel like the way he was able to use makeup to portray himself as a more human being, kind of like a Jack Nicholson looking uh, human being. You know, I feel like there's well, here's the thing. Yeah, much like uh, this fellow you're talking about, mm-hmm. this is not makeup. Mm-hmm. Yes, this is just Danhausen's face. All right, we'll we'll tell a little secret. This here, this red, right. And uh, some of these lines, these evil spikes, those are makeups. But this is just Dan Housen all that throughout. Wow. So, but Dan Housen is, if you remember, he fell on acid, so that's not makeup. Right. But he does put on human makeup. Human makeup. To disguise himself. Yes. But Dan Housen is, however, uh, influenced, if you will, by the uh, cartoon fellow, uh, Mark Hamill. Oh, yeah. Hey. That one is quite nice. Very evil, but also very nice. Yeah, yeah. And now Mark Hamill is getting ready to do a movie with Burt Kreischer. Did you hear about that? Dan has you did not hear about this. Yes, yes. They're doing a movie together where Mark Hamill is going to play Burt's father. Wonderful. We need to get Mark Hamill uh, to play a cartoon version of Dan Housen, perhaps. I think that would be great. I, I mean, I don't know. I feel like you are so good at being Dan Housen that my first choice would be. But, yes. But. I guess you'd be the live action. Maybe version. though, we could do the same thing. We could Dan Housen obviously will voice Dan Housen, but this Mark Hamill fellow could be uh, maybe Dan Housen's uh, good friend. I don't know. Yeah. Now, when you decided to be full Dan Housen and not try to uh, portray sort of a more uh, traditional human qualities in the wrestling ring, have you gotten to the point now? Because you know, I think uh, when you were trying to uh, portray more human characteristics you were much more aggressive and a little bit less uh less showy you know less of the Wee herman dances less of the hypnotism methods uh do you ever get to a point where you're like uh, you know i don't know i may want to go back to being that more human or do you say no 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 this this is the way it's supposed to feel this is what it's supposed to be yes well there is that but dan housing does both now so, joining Ring of Honor has helped Dan Housen kind of melt it together. And now, he just had this wonderful match with uh, Mike Bennett mm-hmm. uh, this last weekend, where Dan Housen let out his aggressive side. There was no time for dancing. Right. So, Dan Housen and Mike Bennett had this wonderfully horrifying match where we just beat the crap out of each other. And we really showed that Dan Housen can be entertaining well, being an aggressive, serious wrestling boy. 
a pure wrestler, if you will. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's that's why, you know, something that I've talked about a lot, because I think it needs to be talked about more, is the Doink the Clown character. In 1993, when he was p- portrayed by Matt Bourne, 1993 Doink the Clown was as good as wrestling gets, because you had this wrestling clown, it was over the top, but then once he got mean, and once he got aggressive, and once he started wrestling, you saw this wrestler who was better than any of the other wrestlers. You saw this guy who could be meaner and more aggressive than anybody else, but he had tricked everybody into thinking he was a clown yes. that wasn't to be taken seriously, and I love that. Exactly. See, these are mind games. Dan Housen is no clown, though, make no mistake. No. But he is tricking them, because Dan Housen put out a tweet the other day. He tweeted, what, a week ago, mm-hmm. that he was talking to uh, Conan O'Brien and The Rock, mm-hmm. and then a week later, The Rock tweets at Dan Housen. So Dan Housen said... Maybe it is time for people to stop thinking that Dan Housen is just joking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I mean, I think that that's true. Here's the thing. When you start cashing those checks, it's time for people to believe the writing that's on them, isn't it? It is it's true. And it's there. Dan Housen has all these sacks of money now. Yeah. Yeah. Who's questioning Dan Housen? That's right. Does it, does, when the sacks of money start coming in, does it make you... I don't know, does it secure your thought process? Does it make you feel like, yeah, I knew? Because I'm sure in the beginning, there were people that didn't get Dan Housen, especially, you know, when you stopped being quite as evil and started being a little bit more nice. I'm sure that there were uh, people and promoters and individuals that didn't quite get, I don't understand what this is. You know, if you're going to be evil, be evil. I don't get what you're doing. When, When the big sacks of money start coming in, does it make you feel like, yeah, I mean, I tried to tell you I knew what I was talking about. Yes, yes, exactly. It's kind of, a, you know, and not in a negative way, but sometimes it's nice to prove people wrong. Yes, yes. Because they start seeing Dan Housen, who has the longest merch line, Dan Housen. Right. So they see, they can see visually that, oh, this fellow is doing something that these people like who are paying tickets to my show. Mm-hmm. So then they start putting more trust in Dan Housen. And hopefully now Dan Housen would like to start wrestling these wrestlers, much like Mike Bennett, who is quite wonderful, mm-hmm. because Dan Housen thinks there's more money in letting Dan Housen fight these pure wrestlers. Yeah, I think so Rather too. Than, uh, fighting these other wonderful characters, perhaps we should team together. But the money to make is for Dan Housen to fight the the Mike Bennetts and the MJFs and the. Uh, the serious wrestlers, the Jonathan Greshams. Yes. No, I agree because you know you want to get you want to get both sides. You want to get the big because you get Dan Housen in the entrance, you get Dan Housen in the merch, you get Dan Housen in the presentation, and then once the bell rings, if we get that other side, well now now we can sit here and go. Dan Housen is not just the appetizer. He's not just set decoration. He's not just you know he is he's the guy. Yes. And the other thing is, you can get Dan Housen during the match as well. Right. Dan Housen knows how to be Dan Housen during this. He learned, what was it, Kevin Owens one time mm-hmm. said that Stone Cold told him to never stop running your mouth. Yes. And guess what Dan Housen doesn't do? Never stops running his mouth, even when he's getting beat up. Constantly talking. Where did the uh, Where did the teeth in the jar come from? Oh, yes. Okay, let's talk about it. So Dan Housen uh, was doing... A uh, surfboard, kind of like Daniel Bryan does, mm-hmm. and he's pulling this fellow's face. And he said, uh, he put a picture out one time and said Dan Housen was trying to eat this fellow's teeth or take them or whatever. Yeah. And then a fan Housen said, Start putting teeth in people's mouths. So Dan Housen uh, took that, slept on it, came back and said, you know what? This is a great idea because teeth are disgusting. Yep. So Dan Housen will start collecting them. And then if you pour teeth in the foe's mouth, it disorients them because they almost throw up because it's gross. Also, it's not illegal, really, because the referee cannot disqualify you for pouring something like teeth that already exists in your mouth into your mouth. Right. It's not thumbtacks. Right. Right. So it's a nice legal distraction for Dan Housen to be able to take advantage in the match. And and also quite a spectacle for the audience when you knock a guy in the chin and teeth go flying everywhere. You're like, did he lose a tooth? You're like, he lost all of them. They're all over the place. Exactly. Well, Because, yes, when uh, Shawn Michael, when he super kicks a fellow and you see a tooth fly, the reaction is, oh. Now, when Dan Housen kicks a fellow in the face, you see 
hundreds of teeth fly. <laughs> yeah, it's from raining teeth. <laughs> yes, it's quite wonderful. I think so too. And then if you slam them, sometimes sometimes they don't have time to sweep up before you slam them back down. You uh -huh. slam them on some teeth, get a little extra in there. And get that bounce, get that bounce effect of the teeth coming off the mat. Yes, yeah, it's visuals. It's all about visuals with Dan Housing. What are the films? What what type of films really uh, influence Dan Housen? Because I feel like there is a lot of uh, there's a cinematic nature even to the promos that, that 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 you put out there on the internet. There's a major there's a, there's clearly a cinematic influence in the whole thing. Oh yes, well Dan Housen was in the production in AIW with uh, where we did a lot of uh, cinematic things. Yeah. So Dan Housen's films though, Texas Chainsaw Massacre two, love it. Uh, what else? Yes. Well, so here's the thing. Dan Housen was very evil. He tries to relate it to this. Original Dan Housen, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm -hmm. New, improved Dan Housen, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Yes. So there's that. Uh, evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness. Mm -hmm. Those are quite wonderful. Uh, Shaun of the Dead is one of Dan Housen's favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? What else? American Werewolf in London. Mm -hmm. uh, Return of the Living Dead. What else have we? Hellraiser, that one's quite nice. Wonderful, beautiful film. Yeah. Uh, oh, Alien. Alien is one of Dan Housen's favorite films. I love that. I love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 comparison, though, because specifically that one is so... Un that's a, such an unapologetic film for what it is. It's like we're not trying to reinvent Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We're not doing that again. This is We're going so over the top. This is going to be so yes. entertainment. There's going to be moments that are tongue in cheek. I mean, Bill Mosley gives just the performance of a lifetime. I love Texas. I mean, I love Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but I love Texas Chainsaw Massacre too as a completely separate film that just exists in its own world. Yes, it might be Dan Housen's favorite horror film. Yeah, yeah, and I feel it's like a wonderful uh, comedy horror film. I agree, and people unfairly, I think, uh, besmirch its good name because. They compare it to the original. However, it's, it's not what you're... I mean, if you take it as its own you entity... You should not do that. That's no. not its purpose. No. I mean, it's like, to me... It's totally separate. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. People say terrible things about Halloween 3, but it's just... Wonderful. It's, um, it's an incredible, incredible film. I mean, you just have to get Michael Myers out of your head from the beginning and then just enjoy the it, ride. It's unbelievable. Also, can we be honest with this? Yeah. Halloween 3 is better than most of the films with Michael Myers. I mean, the vast majority. The I, I would yes, even... because there's like 10 of them after that one that are awful. Yeah. The new one is good. Yeah, the new one's good. Rob Zombie's first one is good. Uh, You know, I might even put Halloween 3 over the original sequel. Yes. So Dan Housen would probably rate it. Halloween. Mm-hmm. Maybe Halloween 3. Mm -hmm. Maybe then Halloween, uh, the new one. Yeah. Yeah, I think. And then maybe whatever else. Dan Housen doesn't care at that point. Probably two, I guess. Uh, right, right. But I believe that that is also like you. People judge it uh, based on preconceived notions that are not necessarily fair or true. And if they would just stop and just observe what's going on in front of them, they'd probably realize, oh, I'm seeing something fabulous here. Take a second to really think about it rather than just going, oh, that is just this. Yes. Yes. Speaking of film, I saw, too, that you uh, declared yourself the May Queen on some of your merchandise, that you uh, were inspired by the, uh, the I mean, probably my favorite film of last year, Midsummer, the Ari Aster film. And, and Yes, what a beautiful looking film. And what better way to celebrate it? By making Dan Housen even more beautiful with a flower crown. Yeah, and I'm really like when you put that Celebrate shirt on. the summer times. Yeah, I thought to myself, yeah, I mean, if I were to give any professional wrestler title of the May Queen, I couldn't. I was trying to rack my brain. Is there anybody more appropriate than Dan Housen for that? And I came up with nobody. Nope, just Dan Housen. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh... It's incredible. Well, Dan Housen, I mean, I'm glad we took this time. I tell you the truth. I have a a, a selfish dream of my own. I don't know if this is a, a goal that you have. I'm sure you're very, very happy uh, that, that Dave Honor is treating you very, very well in Ring of Honor and that you and, and uh, Dalton Castle and, and all of you guys are, are, you know, just tearing it up in Ring of Honor right now. I feel yes. like Ring of Honor is uh, is getting set for this for this renaissance of 
that I agree. organization. You know, I'm I'm very I'm very uh, optimistic about the future of it. All that said, there is a part of me, especially once audiences are back, and once wrestling is going back to theaters and arenas and things like that. There is a part of me that would love the visual of going to an NXT takeover and watching that show and the camera panning to the front row and where you see, you know, instead of it being, you know, Drew McIntyre in a shirt and tie or even Matt Riddle in a shirt and tie or whatever it is, seeing Danhausen in the front row, just, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> of it, of I'll just it. go. Hello, Bates. How are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. To me, I feel like like that would be the mark of like, okay, NXT is going to be taken in a completely new direction now. And I think it'd be quite lovely. Dan Housen could just look at the camera and go, hold on, Dan Housen has to go shake Triple H's hand right now <laughs> and just leave. <laughs> yeah. Gotta go get that photo. Yeah. Yeah. Dan Housen wants to get the point. Yes. Well, who knows? Who Tell them to. Maybe they could just have uh, Dan Housen host WrestleMania next year. He is a famous celebrity, you know. I think that's a great idea. I think if Dan Housen came out to 100,000 people in Dallas, Texas, and just welcomed everybody to WrestleMania, I, th I think it'd be great. Dan Housen's going to be in Dallas. So give Dan Housen a call, send him a million dollars. Dan Housen will be a celebrity guest host. I think it's a fabulous idea. Dan also have him host TakeOver. Dan Housen will host the weekend. Who cares? Host everything. I mean... Go to Raw, be the GM, do it, do it all. Yeah, we'll go to Monday Night WrestleMania. We'll, we'll call it chaos. <laughs> It'll be quite nice. I love it. Who's the anonymous Raw GM? Dan Housen. Wouldn't that be great if you Dan Housen the whole time? Yeah, the whole like we just come back like ten years later. I forgot to remember that thing. Yeah, that was Dan Housen actually. Remember GTV? Dan Housen. <laughs> Dan anonymous Raw GM? Dan Housen. Yeah. Who was it that was raising the briefcase in the McMahon's versus Stone Cold? Yeah. Who hit Stone Cold Steve Austin with the car? It was not Rikishi. It was Dan Housen. Right. But you, and it would make sense. Why would Dan Housen hit Stone Cold with a car? Well, he did it for The Rock. Yes. Also, by the way, Dan Housen was there that night. Really? It was in Detroit, Survivor Series 1998. Yes. Wow. Or 99. One of the two. But Dan Housen was there. I was Angle debuted. Yeah, I want to say it was 99, but whatever year it was, that's an incredible event to to be a part of. That So that was Kurt Angle's debut. Was that the one where, like, everybody was booing him and he and he cut a promo mid-match to reprimand yes. people? Yes, that was it. Hey. But just so you know, Dan Housen was there. Could have been Dan Housen. Yeah, but you know what? He didn't get hit with a PT Cruiser, so I'm a little suspicious. Well, they didn't have any. They only had Mercedes and whatever else, limos and all those things. <laughs> that's a good we point. We did not have the PT Cruiser yet. I guess that's a great it point. It came out the year after. Yeah. It's, 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 it was not invented. That's a good point, too. Before I let you go, I forgot to ask you this. You okay. know, I feel like uh, as I watch, uh, you know, Monday Night Raw and as I watch the AEW shows, as I watch all these shows, I feel like there is this sort of wave of four-letter words returning to television, I hear B words and SH words and all the, all, oh, no. a, a lot of profanity being added back into wrestling. Uh, this is something that you very much are against. Yes. Yes. And let you and Dan Housen to explain it real quick. Yes, 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 please. So if Dan Housen understand it, if you swear on television or radio, cause he's heard this quite often, mm -hmm. you'll get kicked off the air. You'll get censored. You'll get taken off. Yeah. And then you cannot take over the airwaves. Everything comes back down to money and taking over the airwaves with Dan Housen. Ah. So there's also signs usually in the back of these independent wrestling shows Dan Housen is on. Mm -hmm. And usually the sign says, if you are going to talk to the audience, there is no swearing. And then what do people do? They go out there and they swear every other word. What? And then Dan Housen goes, hey, guess who's not very creative? You. Guess who's <laughs> going to go out there and not swear and have a good time? Dan Housen. Guess yeah. who's going to get the louder cheer? Dan Housen. And it will enable Dan Housen to take over. Yeah, I tell you, I mean, I'm with you. I watch some of these independent shows and I watch, you know, I pay a lot of, obviously I pay pretty close attention to broadcasting and commentators and things like that. I am not a fan of commentators that curse throughout the matches. I don't think it's, I don't think it's right. Too much swearing. Too much swearing. Takes away. Yes. 
Yeah. Too much. The only time Dan Housen swore was when he uh, did not get the number one spot on the PWI. Oh, I get that. I get that. I mean, that's yes, yes. That's he was promised he could not get it, so Dan Housen swore a little bit. That's very aggravating. Yeah, and you you gave you 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 gave Renee Young uh, or Renee Paquette what for? Yes. Because of that, correct? Yes, but then she fixed the scenario. She's, by the way, wonderful human being. Wonderful person. Uh, great book. Go buy her book. Dan Housen's plugging her book right now. Mm. Uh, but she promised that this John Moxley fellow mm-hmm. would relinquish his number one spot and give it to Dan Housen. So oh. they have to rectify this situation. Wonderful humans. Dan Housen wishes them the best. That's great. And he's sending them to PT Cruisers oh. on the house. When you're number one in the PWI 500, have you thought about deathmatch wrestling at all? Speaking of John Moxley, I mean, I feel like there is, you know, you know, with your teeth and and the violence, I feel like, uh, you know, there is a scenario. I love deathmatch wrestling when there's a great story being told within the deathmatch. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Is that something yes. that you would uh, participate in? Uh, so Dan Housen does not have much interest in this. Mm-hmm. He does think that uh, Nick Gage and John Moxley are quite wonderful. Mm-hmm. Uh, but eh, Dan Housen tries to do as much as possible, less hurty as possible. So right. Dan Housen has no interest really in uh, getting slammed on thumbtacks or uh, going through barbed wire or those gusset plates. Those are horrifying. Right. Right. No, I get that. And Oh, thank you. And generally speaking, you go through that, you have to go to a hospital. You have to give the hospital money, which money. we're not trying to give money. We're trying to get money, right? Yes. Dan Housen does not want to do these deathmatch wrestlings. Well, you know, if John Moxley said, hey, let's do this exploding uh, thingy, sure, maybe Dan Housen would do it. But Dan Housen will not just be touring the states doing these matches. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Well, you're smart. Dan Housen, you're a— For the right price, maybe. Right. You're a smart guy. You're a money guy. And— uh I, I think that the future is uh is is only going to get better, believe it or not. I, I you know, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point maybe Matt Groening uh goes out of his way to to highlight Dan Housen. I think so. You Brett the Hitman Hart can be on an episode of The Simpsons. I don't see why Dan Housen can't be. You know, Brett Hart did say once that Dan Housen is the excellence of execution. So who knows? He said that. Wow, I hadn't Yes, he said Dan Housen is the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. That's incredible. And from him, that's that's quite an honor. That's Yes. Uh, would... Well, someone bought a cameo, but nevertheless. <laughs> <laughs> they bought it for Dan Housen. He said it. So it's true. Yeah, I get that. I mean, RJ City said that Not Sam Wrestling was the best show on the WWE Network. I mean, there was a little cameo logo in the bottom corner, but he still said it. Very nice, very evil. Dan Housen enjoys this show, and he enjoys RJ City. Yeah, yeah. Well, where where do you want to send people, Dan Housen? Let's see. There's people listening to Not Sam Wrestling now. Let's see if we can get them to take their money and give it to you. How can we get that done? Yes. So Dan Housen has his uh, Patreon page where he does a bunch of exclusive interviews. Mm-hmm. Uh, much like this one, he's had uh, Austin Creed on, uh, Renee Paquette recently. Uh, who, uh, uh, yes, Matt Hardy, big money, Matt Hardy, oh. page, so on and so forth. Lots of people, Ron Funches. Uh, but there's that. We do, uh, cooking shows on there. We do, uh, review shows, hmm. movie review shows too. And, uh, that's where Dan Housen does most of his extra stuff. Hmm. We have cameo.com slash Dan Housen and pro wrestling keys.com slash Dan Housen, where for one week only, you can get the micro brawler of Dan Housen, which just went on sale. And I'll tell you this, it's one week only. So, you know, it sells out regardless because after the week it'll be gone, but I'm going to get yeah. my hands on a couple of them because the last Dan Housen micro brawler, I did not get my hands on. And guess what? Gone, sold out. Everybody got gobbled them up. And it's on eBay now eBay now for like $150. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. There's only 500 sold out in a day. Wow. So get these now. Go to Pro Wrestling Tees and get the Dan Housen Micro Brawlers because you'll, you'll regret not having them, right? Yes, you will absolutely regret it. Also, if you do not get one, Dan Housen will curse you. <laughs> oh, boy. And that's bad. That is bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dan Housen, I appreciate you uh, taking some time out of your busy, celebrity, wealthy schedule to talk to us here. Uh, and it's been great, man. Thank you. Yes. Well, thank you for having Dan Housen. I uh, love that Dan Housen. Love that Sam Housen. <laughs> Thanks, man. Ah!